Okay, so one of the most common shiny ideas that is being sold to you all the time in filmmaking is that you can buy a LUT pack, apply these LUTs to your footage and suddenly they're gonna look amazing. Buy this one preset pack and it will not only make your colors pop, but it will magically make all of your footage look cinematic and fix your cripplingly low self-esteem. Now, I can tell you that this just isn't the case. I myself have bought multiple LUT packs and I still hate myself. Most of the time, when we apply a LUT to our footage straight out of the box and don't make any adjustments, it will look something like this. And obviously, that's not what you want. Now, we can use LUTs to help build a great looking grade in our videos and also to help everything look much more consistent throughout our videos. And they can help us do both of these things pretty fast. So how can we properly use them? In this tutorial, I'll show you how in three steps. All right, so for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using three LUTs from my Subtle Signature Series pack, but it really doesn't matter which LUTs you use as long as they've been properly developed and they're not gonna make your footage look all glitchy and horrible. Okay, so I've selected a few clips for you guys today. We've got six different clips from a variety of environments. So these first couple are from a trip I made in Uganda. This is my friend Sasha. And then we've got a shot of Uma, who is looking across this amazing uh, scenery in Uganda. So step one is to choose the right LUT. Now this is pretty overlooked because often when we buy LUTs, we just think, oh, this one looks cool, I'm gonna put it on everything. However, choosing the right LUT for the right shot is quite important, especially if you've got a LUT pack that is designed to be coherent across your video. So some LUT packs will come with a bunch of different LUTs that have cr such crazy different looks that you only actually wanna use one across all of your shots in a single video, otherwise it's just gonna look super crazy. However, there are also LUT packs like the Subtle Signature Series that I've designed, which are made to be used potentially within the same video. It's called the Subtle Series because the looks aren't that different and you can pick and choose the right LUT for the right shot. So for these two shots, what I want to do is play with the color green. I really want to have this kind of dark desaturated green look to make the subjects pop out of the shot and to also give it this kind of dark jungle vibe. So for this maybe I wouldn't use a typical kind of orange and teal LUT. So what I'm going to do is go down here. This is the three LUTs I'm going to show you guys today. This one is subtle dark greens. So go on that and instantly you can see that the greens have really been kind of taken out. And you can see if I put the intensity down, that's where it was. And we can put it up to 100 and just put it up to 200 just to really show you guys. You can really see it just takes almost all of the color out of the greens and puts them down. And that's exactly what I want for this shot. If we, for example, put the orange and teal on here, these greens now aren't being kind of pushed back and suppressed at all. They're kind of popping almost, which is another look for another video. But for this one, if we put the dark greens on, Bam, that's exactly the look I want. So that's why it's important to choose the right LUT for the right shot. Before we move on to step two, I'm gonna do this with a couple of other shots. Um, let's say this one, I'm gonna put that same LUT on there, which is the subtle dark greens. Boom, instantly you can see all of these greens are getting kind of crushed. However, you can see that Uma here is now very underexposed. So we're gonna have to fix that later, which we will get onto in a second. These two are very different. In these situations, I might use more of a typical orange and teal. So we're gonna go down, get the subtle orange and teal and put that on. And we can also do the same to this one. Now you'll see when I put the orange and teal on here, boom, it goes a little bit too extreme. And you can see that's really, because all of the colors in this shot are very blue, the blue is being pulled towards the teal side. So you can kind of see what that's doing there. Next up, we have a shot of Addy, who is recently featured in my music video for No More Fear, if you want to go check that out on my music channel. This shot, I would probably use a red and teal. Now, red and teal is like orange and teal, makes everything, makes the blues teal, except it makes the kind of skin tones and the oranges slightly more red. And it's a look that I really like and is quite popular these days. So subtle red and teal, and look what that does. It kind of makes it more like desert. It kind of gives this kind of red desert vibe. This is one in Nusa Penida, uh, near Bali. Same thing. I could potentially put an orange and teal on this one, which kind of gives it that kind of classic look but I'm again gonna go with the red and teal. And as you can see, it just makes everything slightly, kind of gives it this red tint that I like as well. So that is step one, choosing the right LUT for the right shot. All right, step two is to adjust the LUT intensity. The rule of thumb for most LUTs is to go somewhere between 
20 and 70%. You don't really want to put them at 100 most of the time unless they are designed to be quite subtle. So this one, I potentially would go around, around 80, I think. If we go towards 100, it just makes everything slightly too contrasty for my liking. Okay, for this one with Umar, I really love what it does to the greens. But then with him, it just makes it kind of makes everything slightly underexposed. So if we look at the original shot, that looks better in some ways, especially in terms of exposure. So I'm just going to play with this a little bit and have this one around 60. This one is looking quite good. However, I think this guy is going a little bit too tealy at this point. So I'm just going to scale it back a little bit. Next one. This one I think is too much. It makes everything way too teal and blue and I don't actually like that much what it's doing. So here it does look a little bit dull, a little bit grey. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit of teal with this orange and teal lot. Around 40 I like where that's doing, 45, somewhere like that. This one can come down a touch. As you can see it's kind of crushing a lot of the shadows here and it is a little bit too red. So I'm just going to put that to around 60. I'm going to leave that quite strong. I think there's quite a lot of room to work with in this shot. I'm liking more or less where this is going. Okay, we're going to get on to the magic third step where I'm going to give you a bunch of tips to actually really refine your workflow and get the LUTs looking great. But before we do that, first, a quick shout out to Filter who are sponsoring this video. So you might have noticed that there's been some awesome background music throughout this tutorial so far and that background music has been provided by Filter. Now Filter are a music platform that allow you to have awesome music within your YouTube videos. The awesome thing about them is that it is completely free. Now I know what you're thinking, how can this be free Thomas? How can you get awesome music in your videos for free? And how that's possible is they have a free account for emerging content creators. Basically, if you are an emerging content creator, i.e. you haven't got a big following, most likely you haven't either monetized your channel yet or you're making so little money that you don't really care about it. This is where Filter comes in. It's completely free for those of you who have small channels because you're gonna wanna choose this over paying for a music database because it's gonna be cheaper. Any money that you're making your videos is going to go to filter which for most of you is going to be either very little or nothing however once you start monetizing your youtube videos and you start growing on youtube and maybe you start making 10 15 20 dollars a month that's when it's going to be worth it for you to switch to the personal account so what that means is that filter will no longer be taking any money from your videos but you will be paying them 15 dollars a month and as long as you're making more than that 15 dollars this is going to be the option that is great for you. So basically filter kind of grows with you as a YouTuber on your journey. So I really like putting this kind of music in the background of my videos. And it's awesome because you can get this caliber of music completely for free. All right, let's get back into step number three. Okay, step three is where we tweak and refine everything. And I've got some really important techniques that are the correct workflow for you to follow. Now what we're gonna do is adjust the exposure and some of the white balance as well, just to make all of our shots really look great. First, we're just gonna choose the right frame. I really like this one, kind of sums up the shot. You see Sasha pretty clearly. So this Lumetri color here we've got open links to this effect here. What we're gonna do to adjust the exposure is we're gonna add in another Lumetri effect. So first we're gonna rename this one to make it clear and we're gonna call this LUT. Okay, and you'll see that here, it says Lumetri Color, brackets LUT. Now what we're gonna do is add a Lumetri Color effect, rename this straight away, and we're gonna call it Exposure. Okay, now we've got an Exposure Control, which doesn't have any LUT applied, it's kind of blank canvas. And then we've got our Lumetri LUT, which has the LUT on there at the desired strength. And what you wanna do with this Exposure Lumetri effect is click and drag and place it above or behind the Lumetri color LUT effect. And I'm gonna illustrate why with this shot to make it the most obvious. So if I just leave it where it is and put that on top of this one, what, we, what we're looking here is this shot is a little bit overexposed. So we're thinking, hmm, all right, what we're gonna do is maybe go on our scopes here and we see all of these whites are just completely clipped. We haven't got any detail in there. So we're just gonna bring down the whites. And you think, ah. Oh, this doesn't look very good. Everything, rather than kind of revealing any detail here, it's just kind of bringing everything down and making it look a bit gray and weird. Huh, that's not good. Why is that happening? That's really annoying. Basically, because we've got this exposure thing placed on top of the LUT. So the LUT is kind of compressing and stretching your information in your shot. And then 
after it's done that, if you start and playing with the exposure, it's just gonna be kind of pushing and pulling that even more or what that LUT has already done. So if we put it before the LUT, what, the, what this control is gonna be doing is it's gonna be correcting and playing with the exposure before the LUT's influence. And so it's gonna be correcting the exposure of the original shot that the LUT then sits on top of. So if we look at what we do with the whites here now, and we pull them down, you'll see that all of a sudden, this beach is being revealed from this sea um, foam here. If we pull this down more and more and more, you can see that none of this kind of graying out is happening. It's actually revealing a lot of detail and making everything look a lot more clear. So that's an extreme example. I wouldn't actually go down that far, but if we go somewhere like here, we can kind of see a clear beach. Whereas before, if we put this effect over the top, you can see if we pull this down, it doesn't really reveal any of that detail and just makes everything look pretty bad. Now in Premiere, it has been designed that these are in order. So the basic correction is gonna come before where you put the LUT. So if we do that same thing and bring down these whites, you can see that it does the same thing in the correct way. However, the reason I like to create new effects is it basically gives you more control because if you did wanna bring down these whites here, but also you wanted to make some curves adjustments, this is gonna be done after the LUT, so that's not what we want. Instead, we want almost everything to be done before the LUT, so we'd go on that exposure control, make sure it's before that LUT, and then we can play with the whites and the curves all before the LUT to get that correct exposure that we want, that we know is taking place before that LUT, that we can actually play with properly. So maybe I would bring down these using the curves. Maybe I like the curves control more than just the basic correction. I think that's looking cool. So that is a really great workflow to use. You create another Lumetri effect and put it before the LUT. So I'm just gonna go through these shots now and show you some examples of what this would look like. So this one we've already got set up. We've got the exposure before. Let's go to that and go into our scopes here and we can see that this one, we've got a lot of these completely clipped whites here. So what I'm gonna do is bring down these whites a little bit, again, going too far, and then just coming back. I think that, that looks too bright now, so I'm just gonna go to there. I'm just kind of paying attention to his skin. Then we're gonna boost these shadows a little bit just to kind of take away some of that contrasty look that the LUT has given it. What I can also do here, play with the saturation, maybe just give it a little bit more. Again, too much coming down, maybe kind of 110 I think looks pretty cool. Next one, we've got Umar here. We're in the exposure controls and yeah, this is looking pretty dark. So let's boost up the shadows just a touch there. Take down the blacks a little bit, just a tiny bit. Actually boost up the highlights. We are losing some detail in the sky here, but I'm not too fussed on that. Basically what we really want is Umar in this view here. As long as the sky isn't completely white and blown out everywhere, I'm fine with that. We might take up the exposure actually just a touch for everything. Maybe bring down the whites a little bit. And that's looking pretty good to me. That was the before with just the LUT and that's the after. It looks kind of much more corrected. I like that a lot more. We're gonna come into this one. And this one, as I said, it's looking awesome already. I really like it. I'm not gonna do much to this, to be honest. So let's just bring these shadows up a touch. And let's try that. We can just turn that on and off, see what we're doing. That's before, that's the after. I actually like that. It looks a little bit brighter in general. Might bring this down a touch. Just brings a little bit more detail back in the jungle there. So I'm gonna stick with that. I like how that's looking. This guy, right. This shot might need a little bit more work because it's just one color. The actual shot is like completely blue. Um, so we might wanna kind of bring out a bit more color contrast in this and see what we can do. So let's go in the exposure control. So we can see our scopes here. It's actually pretty dark. The whole thing's pretty dark. We've got a lot of room to play with. So first thing I might do is bring up the whites, which is something we haven't been doing. Just bring that up a little bit to there. Maybe bring up the highlights. We don't want to make it too bright because I really like the mood of the shot. Could get a bit more detail in the boat there. I really like that. A little bit too bright. I'm going to bring down those whites. Let's try that before, after. That looks cool. Now with the colors here, we could potentially make everything slightly warmer. So I think the white balance might have been a little bit off, to be honest, and I think it is just a bit too blue. So one thing we can do is get the selector, click this, 
and you can see that's supposed to be kind of white although the boat is kind of it's not really white it's a pretty battered boat but you can see that it's just made everything way warmer it's put it to like 46 so i don't want to do that but now if you go back to this you're like whoa that looks way too blue so if we put it somewhere in the middle at like 15 that might be looking quite a lot better from that to that i think that's pretty solid maybe a touch darker that to that i like that a lot final couple of shots so as you can see it is a little bit dark we haven't got too much stuff on the top there which is fine but i don't really like what the LUT has done here it just makes this look all a little bit too crushed for my liking and as you can see if we just boost the shadows up it just brings back a lot of that detail there it's obviously not what i want to do so extreme but let's just bring it up a touch just to bring back a little bit of that and what we can do also is bring up the highlights just a little bit make everything pop a little bit more that looks really nice just go through that a little bit. It's a little bit too contrasty for my liking. So we could bring down that contrast to somewhere like there. And you can always go back and adjust the strength of the LUT. So we can go back here in the middle of this, go back to step two and just think, hmm, do I want more red and teal? In this situation, I do want a little bit more. I think that looks really nice. I want quite a strong look with this one. And let's just go into the exposure and see what we're doing here overall before after awesome all right i hope you enjoyed this video this is the three-step process i use to color grade my footage if you are interested in getting hold of the luts that i've been using in this video the subtle signature series it comes free within the life capture academy if you sign up and you get those three luts as well as a bunch of other bonuses including an awesome sound effects pack as well as, of course, the complete six-week foundation program that gets you from beginner to intermediate to pro and will allow you to capture your memories beautifully and cinematically. That's what the Life Capture Academy is all about. It's in the title, Life Capture Academy. I've also got a pretty awesome half hour free training. You can head over to that in the description. That's going to give you seven secrets to creating amazing cinematic travel videos. So it's really gonna cover the foundations to creating a great video, which is obviously way more important than this stuff. This stuff is having fun with the details, but to actually create amazing looking cinematic shots that tell a great story, you're gonna to wanna to check out that free training in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Again, another huge shout out to Filter for making this video possible. And until next time, keep filming. Bye-bye.